Hello and welcome to day four of our 12 day sixth grade math review. We're finishing up our very first week. We're continuing to walk through the 2017 star test in addition to some other videos that you have on my website, on my uh, YouTube site, my playlist for sixth grade math to help you kind of get through some different concepts. So tonight we are going to start with multiplying by a fraction. And it can be kind of a unique a concept because for the longest time, your teachers always said, whenever you multiply, you always get bigger. Whenever you add, you always get bigger. Well, you know that sometimes your addition comes up with something smaller because if you add a negative, it becomes smaller. Well, the same thing happens with multiplication. Your product always becomes bigger if you multiply whole numbers. But when you start multiplying fractions and start multiplying decimals, that's when things get a little weird. So what we have here is we've got 3 multiplied by 2 thirds. So we're going to say 3 multiplied by 2 thirds. And I want to show you, and they don't even want you to know what the answer is. They just want you to know, is it going to be between 3 and 4? Is the product going to be less than 2 thirds, between 2 thirds and 3, or greater than 4? Well, let me draw a picture. So I'm going to represent this 3. I'm just going to represent this with three circles. So there we go. There's my three circles. And I want to take two thirds of that. Well, I've got three circles. So each third is going to be one. So if I were to take two thirds of that, there's my two thirds. So I would say that two thirds of three, it looks like it's just going to be two. Or if you flip it the other way, if you did repeated addition, if you did two thirds times 3, because we can use the commutative property. The commutative property is sometimes called the order property. It just lets us flip the order of the factors if we're multiplying. It lets us flip the order of the add-ins if we're adding. And so we're going to flip this. We're going to say 2 thirds times 3. That means there's three groups of 2 thirds, like it's repeated addition. So we're going to say 2 thirds plus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds. Because you can say three groups of two-thirds, it's going to be two-thirds plus two-thirds plus two-thirds. If you add all those together, you're going to get six-thirds, and six divided by three is two. So looking at it either way, whether you want to say two-thirds of three or, or three times two-thirds, our answer is going to be C. It's going to be between two-thirds and three. Because when you multiply a whole number, like three, and you multiply a fraction with it that's less than one, then the answer is going to end up being smaller than the whole number. Now, if you didn't want to draw any pictures, let me show you an easy way to multiply fractions. I'm sure you've learned from your teachers that whenever you add fractions, you always have to have the same denominator. Whenever you divide, uh, whenever you subtract fractions, you always have to have the same, den the same denominator. Multiplying fractions is beautiful because you don't have to worry about denominators at all. You simply multiply straight across. Now the problem is, is two-thirds times three. Well, three is not a fraction. Any fraction or any whole number can be turned into a fraction by making it over one. Because three is literally three ones. There's one, there's two, there's three. These are my ones. These are my holes. And three is three holes. So you can take any whole number, make that the numerator, slap a 1 underneath it as a denominator, and now you have a fraction, and guess what? Multiplying straight across, it goes 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 1 is 3. You don't worry about the denominators being the same or being different. You go straight across and you get 6 thirds. Now you are going to have to divide up to make that a mixed number, and in this case, 3 is going to go into 6 twice, so that's how we come up with 2. But... If you didn't know that, you can draw some pictures and realize that if you take a whole number, multiply it by a fraction that's less than 1, your answer is going to end up being less than that whole number because you're not taking the entire whole number. You're only taking a part or a fraction of it. So that's the first problem for this evening. Let's take a look at our second one. It's going to... It's going to make our eyes water a little bit. We need to come up with a value of negative 22, and you get all kinds of negatives and dividing and parentheses and all kinds of business. I would highly suggest slowing down on something like this. First, we're going to need to know our, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, 
order of operations, right? We're going to do our parentheses and then our exponents. Notice how I put the M and the D together. Even though when we're saying, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, we have to put one word in front of the other. But multiplication and division are inverse operations. So if we come to a division first, we're going to do that before multiplication. Same with addition and subtraction. They're inverse operations. So you can come to either one first, left to right. So what we need to do is we need to slow down. We need to take each of these expressions over here. And we need to start breaking it down piece by piece. First, we're going to look at any of our parentheses. And so I've got a parentheses right here. And I've got a parentheses right here. Now, we don't have to do anything with this parentheses. It's just keeping the negative away from the division. So really, I'm not too worried about that parentheses. What I need to do is I just need to worry about this parentheses right here, right? We've got this 8 minus, and in the parentheses, the negative 3. So once again, this is kind of like this one over here. It's just wanting to keep the two negatives separated because it would be really weird if you wrote 8 minus minus 3. That just looks kind of strange. So really, this parentheses is not multiplying by anything or there's no operations within it. So we can just kind of ignore that parentheses right there because all it's doing is just putting a little bit of space between this minus and this negative. So we don't have any exponents. So now what we're going to do is we are looking at our multiplication and division. And the first one we come to is right here because this is just a minus with next to a negative. And this is a division with a negative. So the first one's going to be division. We have 33 divided by 3. So 33 divided by 3 is 11. But since it's 33 divided by negative 3, this is a positive 33 and a positive and negative always mixed together to make a negative. So this is 33 divided by negative 3 is going to end up being negative 11. So I'm going to recopy my 8 minus parentheses minus 3 plus and now I've got this negative 11, so that's why the plus and negative, they look kind of strange. Let's just put a parentheses around that to kind of keep those separate. So now I've got a subtraction, and I've got an addition. And so I'll, I'm just going to go left to right. So I've got 8 minus negative 3, or 8 minus minus 3, right? And so a negative and a negative make a positive, because when you are taking away a negative, you're actually adding something. So these two make a positive. So 8 minus minus 3 is the same as 8 plus 3. Two negatives make a positive. So I'm going to take this 8 minus negative 3, and that's going to be 11. So all of this right here, I'm going to rewrite it down here as 11. And now I've got to rewrite what I have left, plus negative 11. Well, guess what?